What a pain in the butt. These thick, rough, greenside shots where you're fairly close to the, to the flag. You know, if I swing hard enough to guarantee that I'm gonna get it out of this rough, I'm gonna fly way past the pin. If I swing really easy to just make sure that I hit it the right distance, a lot of times the rough's gonna grab my club, it's gonna completely stop it, and I'm just gonna flub it, it's gonna go just a couple feet here. Both options are extremely frustrating and add one or two strokes to your scorecard in a heartbeat. It's a great way to double bogey a hole. So let me set this down really, really thick in this rough. So I'm gonna take this and really bury it down in this Bermuda. Any of you that play in Florida know that this is tougher to hit out of than even you know, fescue that's uh, four or five inches tall because it just completely swallows up the club. So it's really buried in there. There's a couple things I want you to follow. Number one, when we have all this rough to hit through, the last thing I wanna do is catch a bunch of that starting way back here and hit all this grass. It's gonna kill the speed of my club and that's gonna be the one that you flub and hit three or four feet. So I wanna make sure I put it back in my stance. That way I'm chopping down a little bit more. I'm really kinda of thumping the ground when I hit this shot. I wanna see a little bit of a divot almost there, even on this short shot. So I'm coming down, hitting right behind the golf ball. That's gonna allow you to be more consistent, not hit as much of that rough behind it. It also, when you hit the rough, it wants to take that hosel of the club and slam the face shut. It's gonna to help to keep it a little slow or a little bit more square. Number two, I'm gonna open the face a little bit. I have my 60 degree wedge here. I'm gonna open it probably 20 degrees. That way I can go ahead and thump this ball fairly hard if I hit it a little too hard, it's gonna go up in the air and still stop fairly close to the hole. If I hit it a little too soft, it's still gonna get up in the air and it's gonna get on the green. So if you're a little hard or a little soft, it has a lot more margin for error when you have the face slightly open. Number three, I'm gonna have my weight left. And then number four, I'm gonna go ahead and be pretty aggressive with this. It's not a flop shot, but it is fairly aggressive swing. And then number five, I'm gonna go ahead and hinge my wrist. But again, I don't want this to be a chipping type motion. When I do that, you'll notice that because this grass is longer, I'm starting to make contact with the turf way back here. It's gonna eat it up. So ball back in the stance, wait a little bit left, don't have to get crazy left here. Face a little bit open, swing hard and hinge the wrist. If you do those four things, this shot gets pretty easy. All right, now how do you control those distances from 30, 40, 50 yards? This is a specialty shot. You're not gonna have too many of these. If you're getting in tons of these, then it's more about playing a little bit more conservative to the fat side of the green. But what you're gonna have a ton of is scoring opportunities on par fives, where you hit two good shots and you're inside 100 yards. How in the heck did the pros hit a shot that stops right at 30 yards and then take the exact same club a couple holes later and hit a shot that stops right at 60 yards. How do they know how far they're swinging back and through? How do they know how fast they're, they're moving the club and, and how far it's gonna carry? Well, I actually have a system that's gonna break this down for you. And it, it works on what's called the clock system. Most players get this wrong though. So they take it back to here, but I could take it back to here and I could hit it 30 yards. I could take it back to here and I could hit it 80 yards. Maybe not quite 80, probably more like 60. I could hit it a lot of different distances, taking it back to that one spot. It's more about the proper way to do your timing, your rhythm, and your tempo. If you can get the matching the swing length and your swing tempo, that's when you really have it nailed. So I'm gonna play a preview of one of these clock videos here in a second. If you wanna see that full thing, all you need to do is go ahead and click the card that pops up somewhere on your screen here. And don't worry, if you don't see that card, go ahead and go down to the description below and click the link there. You'll get instant access to that. You're gonna start knocking those wedges really close. You're gonna be pretty sharp anywhere inside 100 yards. So I hope you really enjoyed this thick rough video. Now let's dial in those wedges and you're score gonna score a whole heck of a lot better. I used to actually practice a lot in high school. This is one of my favorite things to do. I had a, a strip mowed down the back of my yard where I took the lawnmower. My parents probably hated this because I mowed it down to like half inch turf in the back of the yard because we lived on a farm and I would set buckets or towels along this and I would try to set them at those distances that I knew. And maybe I, I knew my, my 56 degree went right at 65 yards. So I'd set a bucket 65 yards away and I would go ahead and do my nine o'clock swing and I would try to fly it right into the bucket. And I'd be, get to where I could, I could tell for sure if I was gonna be a couple yards short or a couple yards long, just because it gets so ingrained when you get the rhythm and the finish the same every time. So we can use different length backswings 
to control the distance of our wedge shot. So for example, if we imagine that I'm a clock and six o'clock is directly down, my wedge would be at six o'clock or my, my arms would be at six o'clock. I can go back to a 730 swing and I can have the same finish and hit it a certain distance, or I can go back to nine or 1030 and swing through to the same distance. And that's gonna control, or the same finish point, and that's gonna control the distance that my wedge shots are gonna fly in the air. And I've gotta keep that ry rhythm and that tempo very, very consistent. If I vary my tempos, I can hit it all kinds of different distances. So for example, I could have a real quick tempo, 730 swing, and probably hit this 90 yards. I could have a, maybe not really that far, probably 50 or 60 yards. I could have a very slow, slow tempo, 730 swing, and hit half that distance. So I've got to get my distance the same. I've got to get my rhythm the same. That's the real key to it. And the second piece on there.